Hi, welcome to the Gastroenteritis Blues. My name is Steve Lipman. I am joined, as always, with Emily Cannell and Dan Volpone, my two good friends. Dan is finishing up a nice 4.30 p.m. dinner. Um, I'm actually Dan, starting dinner, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Dan, I have, to, I have to ask, what time is dessert and what is for dessert? Oh, well, if I'm so hungry, I'll have ice cream at like six. Mm. But, and what kind of ice cream will that be? Peppermint stick ice cream from Marry Me. Delicious. I don't know peppermint this ice stick? cream. Peppermint stick? It's got like candy canes chopped up in like the vanilla ice cream or whatever. It's really good. Really good. Where is it from? From Marry Me. But it's in like in the suburbs. It's Mary like Mead? Mary Mead. It's really good. Like marry me, like like will no, you marry me? No, at Mary like Santa, like ho ho ho, Merry Christmas. Mead like I don't know, mead. Like, like the beverage. Yeah, yeah, like the beverage. Interesting. Yeah. Never heard Reminds that. me of Marry Me, which is a new uh, Owen Wilson, Jennifer Lopez vehicle that yours truly auditioned for twice. Uh, you'll you'll note that I'm not in that movie. They did not want me in it, but they had me audition for it twice. Uh, I'll get into yelling at my agents later in this podcast. Uh, not sponsored yeah. by that movie. No, certainly no. not. Um, Emily, uh, I would like to ask you what your favorite ice cream flavor is and uh, what, what kind of ice cream, if any, do you have in the house right now? Well, I actually took like a lot of, I was like, kind of personally hurt that I didn't know this ice cream that Dan is having because I consider myself like very well versed in local ice creams and ice cream in general so I was like a bit taken aback by it so um oh but, but it is seasonal by the way so they but I've never even heard of Mary Me. like I don't oh, know yeah. this brand of ice cream and like I know a lot of brands of ice cream little brands big brands I know them all I had ice Let's cream at my fight. wedding I mean like well, I in lieu, in lieu of a cake or in addition no, to a cake? in addition. Whoa. Budget we had cake, was... Whoa. We had cake, small desserts, and ice cream. Wow. If it was in April, it was going to be a whole ass truck, but it was cold, so Steve, I they came inside. Question, because since we weren't invited, how would we have known? We, would, we couldn't possibly know. <laughs> awesome. But anyways, the original question. Yeah. Um, my... Favorite flavor of ice cream is just like a very simple general chocolate peanut butter, like the chocolate with the I thought big. You were gonna like, say General Sows. Go ahead. General Sows ice cream. <laughs> um, like the big thick frozen chunks of peanut butter in it. I think those are so good. Um, I like Turkey Hill brand, but in my freezer right now we have Milk John, which is like a local Philly ice cream. Um, that I'm a big fan of. I'm at one point, I think the owner lived on my street. They sell like pints in the city around the city and you can get them delivered and they have Girl Scout cookie ice cream. Um, so we have Thin Mint ice cream at the house and it's really, really good, so. Great. Um, what about you, Steve? Um, I like to put these takes on the Liberty Ballers Twitter sometimes and people get so mad at them because I have strange tastes in uh, desserts and sweets. Um, I just got some Breyers coffee flavored ice cream. I love a coffee flavored ice cream. And um, that's one of my favorites. Favorites. My dad loves a, a Breyers like vanilla. I love a vanilla bean. Anything is really top of the line. The Sixers. This week they played twice. They played the Celtics. And we have to talk just a no, little bit. No, we don't. Because <laughs> you guys were both at the game, right? <laughs> we were. And did you guys meet up this time? Um, we did. And say hello. And did you have a nice hug? Mm -hmm. And I met Dan's Great. school friend. And who is this school friend? Dan, want to eat more during the podcast? Or, I mean, you're eating like you're this on This is fire. on what YouTube, is Dan. On? This is I don't insane. care if people see me eat. I'm hungry. But, but you're eating you know, as if it, you just wanted an immunity challenge. I don't understand. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, nice I wanted to eat. <laughs> It's 4 30. <laughs> pizza's getting cold. Well, I had a gift card and I'm never I got my haircut. I got my haircut by the pizza place. I had a gift card too. I'm never out there. I was like, I better get a pizza while I'm out there. Oh my god. In the suburbs? Okay. No. I'm, I'm in Spring Garden. But like, where do you get your haircut? Well, I just At got a pizzeria. Super cuts. 
Where is the pizza place? On Callow Hill. That's not far from your apartment. Why are you never yeah, over but there? Yeah, like a 10-minute walk. I'm kind of lazy. Okay. 10 right. minutes. Listen, get let's get down to it. To take a um, walk. All right. So the big thing that happened was that James Harden rang the bell. And this was very exciting. Um, Guess who uh, missed it? Me. Not me. It? Not me. Okay. The game. Okay. This, this made me mad. Because every, it's a t- usually like the game, like, you know, it'll start 10 minutes after the time it says it chips, like a seven game. It'll start at seven ten. This game is listed at seven thirty, and it was on TNT. So I'm thinking like maybe even seven fifteen because they'll like talk beforehand, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm on the escalator. Like I, I finally got in. There was a long line to get in, um, like longer than usual. It was a, it was a big game. There are a lot of people and I'm on the escalator up. And I see that you texted me that Harden rang the bell and you're asking about it. And I hear like people like cheering and stuff. And I'm like, not, I'm not even close to being at my seat. It sucked. And it was the only good part of the night and I missed it. That is such a bummer. So Emily, you tweeted, and it's so funny. Emily, you tweet, this is like one of the main reasons you bought tickets even was to go and see Harden <laughs> bring the ballet if you didn't see it. Uh, Emily, you tweeted about the ripple that sort of went through the stadium when uh, Harden rang the bell. Was it just like a roar of people? Well, it wasn't even when he rang the bell. It was they before the game, like, you know, they do like random stuff before that whole thing about like, let's honor our our all stars. So they like had, you know, showed Joel and Tyrese and James Harden at center court, like with Josh Harris or some bullshit. And when he like stepped out for that, like while people were still warming up, like not even the bell, like it kind of like you could hear it, like go across the thing. Like people are like, there he is, there he is, like wearing this ridiculous outfit. Um, So that like the ripple kind of went around the whole Wells Fargo Center. And then when he rang the bell, it was really cool because they did like, you know, the tonight, like ringing the bell is and then it kind of like went dark for like a second and then they just like played that hype video that they've been playing and so that was like very very exciting um it was like real shameless the amount that I yelled for someone who has been saying they don't want James Harden on this team um but yeah it was really really fun for that like five minute stretch and then it went downhill from there he's frozen yeah he is he looks really nice though he does. He looks a lot nicer than the first time he froze. Before he got on, he froze, and he was in a very funny position. So I, I have a feeling he was going to talk about the rest of the, the Sixers-Celtics game. No, I don't want to talk about that, though, Drew. I don't. I'm back. I oh. apologize. Um, yeah, so the Sixers lost by, like, a fucking thousand. So uh, did uh, is there anything you guys – did you guys stay to the end of that game? They, they truly yes. – the Celtics made every shot. The Sixers couldn't make anything. Uh, it was a nightmare. They went on a little run, and James Harden was gesturing to the crowd. That was fun. They cut it to 17. Um, anything to say about that game? Like, one of the only games I've ever left early in my life. I left after the Same. Game. I stayed till, like, I stayed till there was, like, two minutes left now. It's like, we got to go. Like, this is bad. It was just um, miserable. Like, it wasn't even, like, I've been to losses. And, you know, it's like, I know they're going to lose. I'll still stay till the end. But it was just miserable to watch. Like, it was it was one of the worst basketball games I've ever seen, regardless of being a person. Yeah, yeah and it was just two giant outliers. Like the sec the Sixers' worst game ever and the Celtics' best game ever, like happening on the same night. Um, yeah, it was like, what are the chances? Like, do you see George Niang? They were like, what do you think when like this happens? And he's like, oh shit! Like there was literally <laughs> nothing they could do to stop it. Like it was just you know but so, then the next game was better next game was wonderful the next game uh so then it, it sort of felt like for me it was like boy can this just be the all-star break now like let's just get hard and playing and be good again because now it's like we have to play the bucks on the road in milwaukee i kind of felt like i really don't want like another loss to a good team like this will really kind of feel gross to like lose twice in front of Harden, who's like the cool kid who's hanging out with us now. And like, uh, yeah, I feel like embarrassed a little bit. Um, so Harden insisted on, uh, Maurice said this when he went on uh, rights to Ricky Sanchez, um, uh, Harden insisted on going on the trip to, there was a ton of Harden's a great guy, great teammate uh, content this week. It was really, we were eating it up and we can talk more about that. But 
Um, Harden insisted on going with the team to Milwaukee. Um, the Sixers looked better in this one from the start, just like really more cohesive. Joel looked a lot better in this one. Um, and it was a great, great, great win. Um, Joel head to head with um, uh, Giannis. Maxi had an incredible um, stint in the second quarter that was like spurred on by James Harden, like pulling him aside and being like, Hey, stop fucking around and like go and score a bunch of points straight. And he was like, all right, I'll do that. And there's a great clip of him saying, yelling, thank you at him. Like I'm, I just love all of this stuff with Harden on the sidelines. Um, Tobias had a decent game, but had a very good defensive game on Chris Middleton, which is important because I feel like Middleton usually kills the Sixers. Um, and like down the stretch, I feel like there were like three minutes left and Milwaukee went up four. And I remember thinking like, this is, they're about to win. Like, it's going to be too hard for the Sixers to score down here and, and they're about to win. Niang, so in this game, Doc has Niang guarding Harden or guarding, uh, no, Harden's the Sixer. Doc Giannis. has Niang guarding Giannis. And I'm thinking, who made a mistake here? Someone made a mistake. And Niang, who is like, slow and not objectively strong he's big um and like usually is in the right place but like this can't be intentional but it worked relatively well like Giannis's line I'm sure was excellent because it always is but like Niang and then Joel just sort of as a roamer and helping worked really well and and Doc overall really coached uh, I think a very good game in this one um so I was very impressed uh, with this game. And it was just like a really impressive and exciting win to go into the All-Star break with this. Um, Emily, any takeaway thoughts on this game? It was a great, like, Joel for MVP game because Giannis is very much in that discussion. Um, oh, oh, uh, in terms of the Harden, assistant coach Harden and, like, great teammate Harden, George Niang, George Niang said he drove into the paint and lost the ball early in the game. After that, James Harden yelled at him and said, put up 10 threes. That's what you do. Niang ended up taking 10 threes and made five of them. Um, so Emily, any thoughts on uh, just all of that stuff in the Milwaukee game? Yeah, it was a really great game. That spurt at the end of the first half where Maxi kind of just like took over for a few minutes was very fun so to good. watch. I just love that kid. Um, Niang is just kind of he's been really good recently and he's kind of the kind of guy that is like big and like tough like he'll just like let Giannis body him and like not really care like he'll just like stand his ground as much as he can on someone like Giannis and I think it kind of throws a wrench in Giannis's plans because a lot of times people will don't want to take those hits over and over again but Niang seems to be okay with it so that's cool um and Joel was incredible. I really enjoyed the uh, the Sixers Twitter with the the King of Milwaukee tweet. Yeah, it was really top notch, petty, and I applaud them for that. And that was a fun way to go in to the All Star break. So, Yang was a great signing. They signed him for like two years, three million each. Uh, I had a hard time complimenting Daryl on these little. $2 million signings as Ben was eating a hole in my brain and on the Sixers <sighs> cap sheet. But now that he traded for James Harden, I have a lot easier time being like, Oh, this guy's going to play a ton with Joel and with Harden. And he's done excellent this year. So I'm so happy to have him. And um, uh, he's been just really great. Dan thoughts on the Milwaukee game. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely up there for one of the best wins of the season. And I, I feel like they've had a lot of really good wins because their record against the top teams in both conferences is like really, really good. Uh, even though, you know, Ben hasn't played at all and now Harden hasn't played at all yet. Um, just a really great game. Uh, stressed me out so bad, especially at the end when they almost, you know, blew it when Furkan ran out of bounds. Ran out of bounds. Um, really just catch the ball and throw it in the air because two seconds will be over. <laughs> I, I was very stressed about that one. Um, but no, it was it was awesome. It was a great game. Joel was unbelievable. I think he shot sixty seven percent from the field. Um, Yang was like you said was great on both ends. But um, you know the the idea of having Yang Guardianis with Joel just basically ready to help at all times um, worked really really well. And um, and Doc definitely deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, I I think my. Oof, if I had to pick a favorite part of the game, I mean, 
Maxie's like amazing two minutes with Harding getting up off the bench and cheering him on was a lot of fun. Um, you know, with the Sixers, Joel has really been um, has really been the guy who's um, been like a leader for the young guys the last couple of years. Um, he's gotten a lot more vocal and he's, you know, clearly like taken, you know, his attention to them a bit to challenge them to do certain things. We've seen it, you know, in press conferences and stuff. Um, but he's not a similar player. Like he's not, he's like the opposite position of Tyrese Massey, right? Like Terrell's always the biggest guy on the floor and Tyrese is always the smallest. Um, one of the things I read when the Sixers traded for Harden was that Harden was the guy in Brooklyn who was pulling the young guys aside, teaching them this, showing them how to do this. That was not KD. That was not Kyrie. That was something that James Harden did. And so it was really exciting to have him, you know, here and, and just being that, you know, veteran future hall of fame guard who can, you know, cause as, as much as I'm as sure, I'm sure it means when Joel has that kind of thing to say, like, he probably can't give Tyrese Maxey advice on a lot of things about, you know, playing that position. Whereas James Harden definitely can. Right. So um, I think it was um, a really cool moment and it, it has me especially excited. I like that, you know, Harden wanted to, wanted to come to Milwaukee with them. I like how energetic he's been. He's really been, you know, engaged in the games at all times. Um, it's really cool to see. He and didn't yeah. leave that Celtics game early. You know how like Joel leaves after the first half and goes back for treatment. James Harden <laughs> was on that bench that whole game. <laughs> That's a, something. Yeah, I wasn't. I left. But, right. Like <laughs> yeah. Joel. Joel's the MVP, right? I mean, that was also that yeah. was the thing from that game. I have. Um, I love like after a big Joel game, just going on YouTube and seeing what you know, the people who like don't even watch everyone else just say about him, like the national TV people who like watched that game only because it was on TNT. Um, but it's just fun to see like, you know, Joel gets so much praise in front of a big audience um, and see, you know, how respected he's come, uh, how respected he's become around the league. Uh, it was really, really cool. And, you know, I, I wasn't super excited for that game after that Boston game, but uh, it turned into, you know, like I said, one of the best wins of the season and just such a great way to go into the break. Um, Paul Millsap played backup center in that game. I thought he looked okay. I, you know, he he moves fairly well. He's certainly got fresh legs. He demanded a trade out of Brooklyn very, like, funnily months ago and then ended up getting added to the Simmons trade. Also, in that Rights to Ricky Sanchez interview, um, Daryl said that the Sixers are pretty much close on signing a buyout backup center uh and they haven't yet and i think they said something similar last year and then didn't sign anyone um i, I don't know about you guys i feel fine about their backup center situation like i'm not dying for one of these guys the names that are out there potentially like Derek favors is people's like favorite one but he has a player option for 10 million dollars next year so he would have to basically not want to do that 10 million dollar option he's never getting that money again so he would have to really want to try to win a title, um, which is not impossible, but like it feels unlikely to me that they would do that. Um, he's in Oklahoma City. There's Mike Muscala also in Oklahoma City. He's a shooter, but that's about it. Um, but he, he's very, you know, he's sort of different than what they have. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, who obviously jo Doc knows and, and I think probably loves, and he's a big lob guy, but I think other than that, he's pretty bad. Like, I, I just kind of feel fine between, like, the two Pauls and Bassey. Like, I'm not sweating it. Like, they're going to play 10 minutes in the playoffs when it counts. Like, I don't – and now that we have Harden, I think that he's going to make these guys just fine. Like, I, I don't know. This doesn't feel like and, – and also, if we're getting a buyout guy, I'd rather have a wing. Um, I don't know. Dan, how do you feel? Like, do you, are you looking for a buyout big? How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I would be fine with, like, favors, I guess. But I don't know. When I look at it, it's like they have four centers on the roster right now. Three of them are backups. And if you don't think that any of those three can play, then, like, why are they even on the team? Mm -hmm. like, like, I guess, you know, Paul Reed and Charles Bassey are at least young. Like, if you don't think Paul Millsap can play, then, like, why is why do you even have him right now? And, like, I think – I think Reed would be fine. Like I know he's you know, can 
make some mistakes here and there and mess up in some funny ways and he can be a bit awkward, but he's, you know, a fine defender. He can, you know, get you some points. He gives, gives you energy. Like he's fine. I think he's fine as your backup center. You don't, I think we've been so like scarred the past few years over like, you know, we get killed when Joel sits and it's just natural to think like, Oh, I guess the backup center sucks. But like in reality, like the team fell apart because their anchor of their offense and defense wasn't on the floor and they had nothing. And especially they really couldn't score without a man. Like they're going to have James Harden in the minutes he's out now. So well, they should. Doc has to do that. Yeah, but they should. Yeah. So it's, I don't think they're going to be falling apart in the same way. They'll obviously still be better when Joel is in, but like I, I'm just not overly concerned about the back of five position. I think the options we have are fine. I mean, the one guy I would have an eye on in the buyout market who I haven't heard linked to the Sixers, I don't think it's going to happen, would be Goran Dragic. I think he's just the best player out there. And, um, you know, it sounds like he'll probably end up elsewhere. Uh, which I which I get. I mean, I'm sure someone could offer him more minutes. Like right. I think the Nets could offer him a starting role most of the year because um, Kyrie is only playing half the games. Um, and so I don't expect him to end up here. I haven't seen, you know, any wing names that have been especially interesting, but, you know, maybe things change. Maybe someone unexpected gets bought out. Um, we'll have to see what happens. But I am not overly um, – like bullish on the buyout market right now because I just haven't seen anyone who I think, you know, is a huge substantial upgrade besides Dragic, who I don't think is coming. Emily? Yeah, I agree with Dan. Um, the buyout market is kind of boring this year. Like there's no one that really like excites me. I think that's partially because I'm like very excited by our team as yeah. it is constructed. Um, and I also think like Dan said, we were scarred from backup picks. And then the first half of the season, we were kind of like blessed with a great backup center. Um, Drummond was so fun and brought energy and is such a great rebounder. Um, so then as soon as he's gone, you're like, well, we have to replace him. But like, there's no one on the market that is at that level, really. Um, so I think we're fine with what we have. I like, I've said it before. I like the chaos that like, a Paul Reed or a Bassey brings. And if it's 10 minutes, like maybe that chaos is helpful to just like throw the other team for a loop for 10 minutes. And then Joel comes back in. Like, I think that's fine. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this week, uh, uh, at the beginning of the week, uh, Ben Simmons and James Harden spoke uh, to the media for Simmons. It was his first time talking to reporters since game seven against uh, Atlanta in Philadelphia. Now, when I Simmons, read this on our notes, sorry, yeah. I thought you meant that they talked to each other. And I was like, yeah, well, how did I miss down. how mm -hmm. did I miss this story in the news that they talk? But you mean to yeah. the media separately? Understood. No, it was on Red Table Talk. You missed this. <laughs> it was. Um, yeah, it was really good. Um, so uh, so so Simmons. So Simmons hadn't talked to reporters since game seven uh, against uh, uh, Atlanta. Um this coincided with the day long sort of meltdown about Philadelphia fans and uh, mental health. I don't really have any interest in that anymore, given that Ben's not here anymore. And whenever we play the Mets, we're going to have to probably deal with that uh, anyway. So that's not right now. Yeah, it's like, you know, so anyway, Ben historically has given the media very little, uh, except for sort of snippy comments. If ever you should sort of deign that he should try improving. Um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, I wasn't expecting him to shed any new light on anything, really. And he basically did that. Like, you know, I thought that he was fine. I'll read a few quotes. But like, I thought that given what we've learned to expect from his like public comments, like, even though he hasn't put it, been putting his name on things, like he has been speaking through his agent and through articles for months and months and months. Like we've been hearing what he wants for a long time. And, and we've been hearing the many, 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 many reasons why they've been saying he wants to be out. But anyway, here's what, here's what he said. Um, Simmons on whether or not he would have re returned to Philly. It was about making sure mentally I was right. It wasn't about the coaches or fans. Uh, it wasn't a personal thing toward any player or coach or owners or anything like that. 
Simmons on what happened that led to his exit in Philly. If I knew, I would tell you everything. It's just a lot of things internally that happened over time. And it just got to a place where I don't think it was good for me mentally. Uh, Simmons on if he'll be physically and mentally ready for March 10th versus Philly. I hope so. Uh, Simmons on people who are skeptical of his mental health claims. They should be happy. I'm smiling. Honestly, I've had some dark times over the past six months and I'm happy to be with this team. Um, you know, they asked Simmons about people he talked to after the trade. He basically said that he talked to a few of his teammates, including like Harris and I'm sure Maxi and I, I don't know who else, but he asked him about Joel and he said, no, um, Elton Brand and, 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 you know, ownership. I'm sure uh, he mentioned that he talked to. Um, but that's about it. He said that it's going to be scary when he plays with, uh, you know, the Brooklyn guys. Um, but that's it. Like, I don't, you know, he said what you would think he would say, like he was non-committal. He was not going to be like, okay, here's exactly what happened in Philadelphia. Here's why I literally would not go play for them. He was never going to open up about why that maybe like, if that ever happens, it's not, it's going to be five years from now. You know what I mean? In some sort of moment of clarity. So um, you know, I sort of a shoulder shrugger for me and we'll see if he plays on March 10th. I don't know whether or not Emily and I talked about this last week, Like, I don't know whether or not I expect him. First of all, it's whether or not he's playing basketball at that time, which I have literally no way to guess. I would um, bet a lot of money that he's not playing. No, he, but is that because he's not playing anyone at that time or because, no, because he's not going to play at the Wells Fargo center this year, but he has to at some point, right? Well, he won't, well, if they match up, he won't this regular season. If it's a playoff series, maybe early next year, like if it's in the regular season, still maybe not, right? Like that back flares up sometimes, could easily be, hey, it's flaring up today. You know, what, what, I think what Emily and I said last time is just like, I agree. I agree that he would probably want to do everything in his power to not walk into that environment. But he already has. It almost becomes fucking worse. Yes, he always he already has. It almost becomes worse if then everybody's pointing and laughing, being like, he's ducking that game. You he's got to rip like, the band-aid off, especially if they're right. gonna meet in the playoffs. You don't want that know, first time to like, be in the playoffs. Like, boy, You've got to you, rip the band-aid off. But I think he's at a point where it's like he he's not, he's clearly. Uh, he he wouldn't be able to even function every day. I don't, I don't even mean this in like a rude way, just like in reality, if you were afraid of being laughed at, like he was a laughing stock after that playoff series, like he was getting made fun of at the ESPYs and like on national TV all over the place, right? Like yeah. what what's, what's, and the, the holdout didn't help, right? Like that didn't help yeah. that, that didn't gain him respect. And so like, if you already did all of that, what's one more day of not playing in Philly? If that's something you really don't want to do for a meaningless regular season game, if you really don't want to play in, in Philly in front of these fans, like if that's your thing, fine, that's your thing. Like it makes sense to me that he wouldn't play. I mean, we'll see. That, get, that game's only, what, like three weeks away. So he could very well not be playing at all then, and then it's sort of a moot point. Um, do you the have any cheapest other ticket for that game is $170 right It's going to be, well, I mean, Joel recently said, I don't know if Duran will be playing by then, which would take a lot of juice out of it. But um, Joel recently said there's certainly going to be something extra uh, in that game. Um, <laughs> even though the, the tweet of his was just a nice looking man in a suit. Um, do you have any other, uh, anything else on his, on his comments there from, from the reporters, Dan? No, not really. I mean, I remember, you know, I remember reading that he said that, you know, it wasn't any one particular player or one particular coach or one or the fans or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know what it was, but it, I kind of believe it. I want to say, like, I kind of believe that. I mean, I, I think, I think that in some ways it is the fans and that he didn't, he didn't want to have to play here again. I think he, he understood that he lost a lot of respect in that series. Um, but I don't, you know, in terms of like long-term treatment from fans, right. I don't, I believe him that it wasn't that I believe him that it wasn't, you know, you know, just doc said this or just Joel said this, although we definitely know that's part of it because it, they've brought it up over and over and over again when like we could have easily forgotten it by now. Um, but yeah, when, when you see the leaks and there's like, 800 different reasons thrown at the wall and it almost feels like they're just trying to get something to stick and nothing stuck it's like yeah well when he makes that comment i kind of do believe that like 
it was just everything. Like everything bothered him a little bit. And he decided that, you know, that was enough and he's done. Um, that doesn't mean I, res I necessarily respect that. Although if, you know, if it's true that, you know, he needed that for his own well-being, then sure, I respect it that way. Um, if, if, you know, he just was fed up and this was his way out, I don't really respect the holdout in that case. Um, but, but really, I, I do, you know, kind of believe that comment that, you know, it wasn't just one thing that happened that he, he feels like two, like a bunch of things have built up and happened. And, and really, it seems like, you know, he, he might have a hard time letting a lot of things go that have happened because I, he doesn't seem to be able to express like, you know, it was this that did it, or it was this that did it. It seems like he has, you know, kind of a, a built up, a build up of frustrations with the team that he hasn't been able to let go for a while now. So I don't really know, you know, what that is. And I doubt that he'll ever really be able to tell us what that is, if it's really that many things over that much time, but I guess he just had a feeling he was ready to go. That's the, that's what the sense I get from his comments. Emily? Um, yeah, I don't really have anything from it. Um, I don't like agree with this holdout, but I'm kind of glad he's somewhere he wants to be. It did make me sad when he was like, you should be happy. I'm smiling. I've had some dark times in the past six months. I was like, Ooh, that's kind of tough. But, um, yeah, I hope he's happier in Brooklyn. I, hope that the Sixers still beat them and we can just move on from everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, uh, I can't do that. You know, Godspeed for the people that can like get up the energy to do this conversation every fucking day. Like I can't do it. Like hey, it's not necessary anymore. I mean, just get over like, it and not get over it. I, like what I mean is like the people who can do the Philadelphia fan conversation about Ben Simmons oh. all the time. I Well, I, and it's, it's so anyway. ridiculous. I mean, it's that conversation is had by people who have never been here, don't know anybody here and didn't follow the Sixers, didn't follow the Ben Simmons situation. Yeah. Closely, right. Like the, that's the, anyone who has been to games here, who was, you know, now I've, you know, I've criticized Ben for a while now, but you guys were right there with me at game five as they blew that lead and he was missing foul shot after foul shot. And I cheered him when he got to the foul line down the stretch because I wanted the team to win and I wanted him to feel supported so the team could win. And everyone else was like that. He was getting cheered throughout the whole stadium. So that whole narrative is, is ridiculous. Yeah. And it doesn't, we don't like, we don't need to keep talking about it. We could talk about it right now, but we don't need to keep talking about it because those people really just have no clue what they're talking about. And yeah. they're just being assholes. That's all it is. There were Philly fans are such an easy target and that's all it is. They're like, Oh yeah, let me go. Let me go blame these people. I, I'm going to decide it's these people's fault. These people yeah. don't, they're, not, they're disrespectful. They don't care about mental health. Meanwhile, they don't know any of us at all. Um, I'm sure, you know, so many people go through their own things. I think everyone, you know, can respect the fact that, you know, Ben has been, you know, probably going through, you know, something who knows what it was or if it, you know, he hasn't gotten his, his money. So maybe it didn't fall within whatever fell within whatever, whatever lies within, you know, the boundaries of the CBA's definition of whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. But like, to, to, to act like you know we are we're just such an easy target and we've always been and that's that's why people who don't know yeah. what they're talking about who otherwise maybe would be more careful to talk about things they don't know about have no problem just being like oh the philly fans did it again so james harden also spoke the same day like a half hour after they like got the thumbs up that simmons was done and then they started um simmons said uh, i knew i knew for a very long time that this was a perfect fit simmons or Harden said that. Harden said that uh, last year when he uh, requested a trade out of Houston, that Philadelphia was his number one choice, that he really wanted to go to uh, Philadelphia over Brooklyn. I don't know if this was true. I'm choosing to believe that it was, but this was like Woj had reported that Brooklyn was the number one choice and then Philadelphia. Um, I do not know uh, if in the deal zone, Philadelphia was ahead of Brooklyn or not. I don't know, but um Harden said that he will opt in to his, uh, his um, player option next year with, with the Sixers. He couldn't get the paperwork done in time. He was, he was, he was leafing through it. He just, he, he had his autofill on his PDF. He was like going through it and he just this simply. This is why couldn't. you hire an agent, by the way. This is, yeah, he just, he could not, he literally could not do it in time. Um, 
you know, they asked him, uh, you know, can you and Joel sort of get this together this season in order to win a title? He interrupted the reporter. He said, hell yeah. He said, after the break, it's go time. Um, he said that, you know, he gushed over Maxi. He said that, you know, his confidence is soaring and, and that he has everything. He said, Tobias can get you 20 a night and it's my job to get that out of him. He, he gave a great press conference and, and just seemed very sort of all in and, and said that, Oh, he absolutely pandered. He said Philadelphia's best fans in the world. They're best fans in the league. Um, Emily, any takeaways from Harden's press conference? No, I think he said um, all the right things. So I will accept them at face value. Great. Dan? No, just that the pandering thing is so easy. Um, you just do it. Like, who knows? You it. might have... He could have been lying about, you know, he totally. wanted to come here last year. Who cares? We're never going to know, right? Just fucking say it. Who cares? Yeah, he said the same thing in Brooklyn last year, kind of. I mean, he said something similar, at least. He could have. What, what, who cares? Just say yeah. it. Just say it. Just say that we're the best. Who, who doesn't matter? It doesn't matter if you believe it. he's never played in, in, in front of Philly as, as a home, home player. He's, he doesn't know, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's what people want to hear. And it, it buys you so much, like. You know, like when Bryce came to Philly, Bryce Harper came to Philly, he struggled at first, oh my God. right? Yeah. But like he didn't have everyone like hating him or anything because he did the pandering thing and he wore the fanatic shoes. And like, it's that simple. Like number ben three. Never, yeah. Ben never figured that out. I know it's really, really easy. Just just say those things and people get off your back. It's not that hard. Harden's like, you know, my idol is actually uh, Mike Schmidt. Um, he, he just he's just the best athlete. Um, all right, we're going to take an ad break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Zach Lowe, who had a rumor, Adam Sandler, who had a movie trailer with a lot of different Sixers, Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid being very cute, and uh, update the standings, and then talk about no games this week. Uh, we'll be right back. Here's the ad break. We're back. All right, so Zach Lowe on his podcast with Howard Beck last week um, said that there is a rumor spreading around the league that uh, Harden not finishing up the paperwork on his opt-in is not exactly passing the smell test. And instead, what people, have you guys seen this? Instead, what people think is that Harden is going to decline his option, re-sign for less money. The Sixers are going to dump Tobias Harris into space and sign a third star. I would argue fourth because Maxi's a star. What do you guys think of this? Thing that is apparently now like a conspiracy theory that's going around the league. Like, do you think there's anything to this? This feels awfully early that already Harden hasn't played a game yet and already we're angling for another star, but like Harden would re-sign with Philly for less money and uh, <laughs> and uh, they dump Tobias someplace and sign a star uh, uh, to come into Philly. Emily, anything? Um, I mean... It's a, I think it's a little early, but I mean, it makes sense. Like it could, it could be true. Um, but I, I think maybe it's like, this is like a secret, like kind of like the, what do they call it? Like the poison pill, like this plan is in our back pocket. If this goes really awry, but we don't like need to like bite the poison pill yet because this could work out and be fine. The poison pill is also a literal NBA term about like r rookie max extensions but that's not what you're talking about no i'm talking about the ones that spies had that like they had to, to die so they didn't give up the team secrets the I spy secrets yeah dan any thoughts on uh you know harden harden's been here a while now and he's already recruiting what do you think uh it's an interesting idea i think that Harden probably has a lot of trust in daryl and that's a big reason he wanted to come here and is probably right. interested in the team building side of things um I'm not sure why a you know James Harden who could anywhere else get a super max is going to take less um and like we'll be getting paid you know 50 million dollars past his prime or six, I think 61 year possibly I'm not sure why that player doesn't take that deal um it'd be great if, if they could figure this out I'm I'm not you know fully sure on the logistics of this I think you'd have to be some kind of, you know, sign and trade where someone values Tobias in some way. Um, because I, I still don't see how, um, like, I see how you could get below the apron uh, with Harden taking less and making a signing trade, a sign and trade. I, 
I, it would take a ton for them to get another max player and then get below, you know, the cap to sign them into space. Um, unless that player is taking less two, which seems unlikely. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting idea. It's, it's exciting. I mean, I always, you know, kind of saw, and I'm a little stingy with the word star, but I always saw the Sixers as a one-star team. Like if you're talking true superstars, not guys who are fringe all-stars, but like a real top 10, maybe top 15 player, like, top 20 at worst, right? Like I see like Beal is like maybe the bottom end of a star, like maybe like not even like, it's a word I, I'm a bit more stingy with. And like Harden is that now, you know, Joel always was that. And now we have a second and it's exciting to think that, you know, maybe there's another player like that out there who who we could get, who wants to come here. Um, LeBron seems absolutely miserable in Los Angeles. Um, oh, hates so, it. so, hey, maybe, maybe he's up, but um <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to see what happens but it's an exciting thought to be working from a place of you know we're already definitely contenders now and maybe it gets even better you know before it was like hopefully we can make a move that gets us to become a contender hopefully we can get that second star um that that truly great player next to joel um and i we did that so now it's like how can we make it even better yeah it's a pretty it's a pretty awesome thought i don't think it's that realistic but they definitely should be at least considering it, right? Like they should be trying to keep their options open for that kind of thing. Because, you know, if, if somehow you get LeBron James, yeah, he's probably not the, the name that they're thinking of even, but just saying you get a guy like that, you get a third top 10 player, like that's a title, right? Like if you're healthy, no one's beating that team. Um, and so it's, it's pretty exciting. I don't, it seems like a lot of, uh, you know, assumptions to be made about James Harden taking a lot less money for some reason when he might probably doesn't even have to, to compete. Um, and someone else wanted to come here and someone wanted to buy us, and, but I'm sure Daryl's thinking about those things. So yeah, it's uh that's, that's pretty cool. Wouldn't be excited to sign LeBron and then uh, my dad to call me and tell me about how there's only one ball. Um, all right. So Adam Sandler, two of the greatest passers of all time on the team. Yeah. is one ball. <laughs> um, <laughs> Adam Sandler released a movie trailer this week. Uh, we, we knew for a while that Sandler did this movie called Hustle. Uh, and in this trailer um, is local cookie store owner Tobias Harris. Those um, cookies are so good. They look really good. Um, uh, and uh, Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, Seth Curry, I believe, is in the trailer. Um, is that it for Sixers? or or Because then there's other NBA people. Anthony Edwards in it is in it. Um, why don't Pancho Mac- Hernan Gomez is Maxi is in it. Maxie yeah, I mentioned Maxi. Oh, um, uh, Wancho Hernan Gomez is the main guy in it. So Sailor plays a um, a uh, scout who, and then he's trying to. I think he's trying to get this guy onto the Sixers. So then he's at the Sixers facility. It's like him walking through the the Jetro lot or one of the, one of the lots, and um, and he's like in there. There's Mark Jackson's in it. Um, uh, not in the movie is me. Now, we've talked about this before, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I do have representation. I do have suits. Okay? Oh, Matisse is in it too. I'm watching it Matisse right now. Matisse is great. Cool. Matisse is in a Sandler movie before me. <laughs> what the fuck? Was awful against the box, by the way. Terrible. Played 15 yeah. minutes. What are they doing exactly? If they're not getting me like a 10 second role in an Adam Sandler Philadelphia basketball movie with the Sixers, like I can't get it. I can't be a barista at the, at the facility. Here you go, Sandman. Here's the, here's the macchiato you ordered. Who's, who's working for me these days? I'm auditioning for marry me. I'm not going to get into that movie. What are we doing? Emily. I think you also could have been one of the spectators at the pickup game at yeah. by uh, Pat's and Gino's. That would have yep. been a nice a nice place for you. I would have um, played Alex Subers. Click click, come on. <laughs> you could have done click, that. Click click, come on. You could have wear glasses like him. That'd be great. Does Absolutely. he say click click, come on? What is this? Yeah, I could <laughs> sit with my legs folded like he does, and all those pictures and the glasses, and I'm going, <laughs> guys, that looks great. Let me get one more. Can you put your arm up? Great. I'm Subers. What are we doing? So I'm placing some calls. I'm reaching out, but I'm, yeah. I'm livid about it, but I'm excited for everyone. Emily, give me your takeaways on this trailer. Um, Jesus, fuck. I'm really sad that you're not in this movie. Yeah. But um, it looks kind of good. 
it's kind of good. I'm excited yeah. for it. Um, I'd like that it's very fun as someone who lives in Philadelphia and South Philadelphia, where a lot of this movie is filmed. Um, I'm in walking distance from that Sixers mural that they show from Pat's and Gino's. I remember when they were filming it. I wanted to skip work and go watch, but I was responsible and didn't. Um, it's very cool to see Adam Sandler wearing a federal donut sweatshirt. Um, so it's, and I like the, it's not like a Philly movie that was filmed in LA. It's a Philly movie that was filmed in Philly. So that's very fun. Um, I'm interested to see like how the players are in the movie. Like, cause I think I'll, I don't know about like Anthony Edwards and that I kind of think like he's like another up and coming star that's like in competition, but like, it looks like Maxi and like Matisse are in the Sixers locker room. So they're like playing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it'll be interesting. It, it looks, I'm, I'm going to watch it when it comes on to Netflix. I don't even have to spend yeah. money to watch it. This was just a, a teaser, but it, um, it does look good. Um, Dan, what'd you think? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, the last uh, basketball movie Adam Sandler did, I really liked. So I don't think this is anything like on Cut Jones, but that's okay. I'm still going to watch it. Um, you don't know. It looks kind of dark. He's yelling a lot in it. So do you love this game? <laughs> great. Yeah, it's great. Um, so, yeah. You know, speaking of uncut gems, can I, can I mention a bet I had on the box game real quick? Sure. You so tweeted about it. I had a seven leg parlay, right? So it was, you know, one of the free $10 bets you get from FanDuel. And um, it was, it would have won me uh, $1,446 and 70 cents uh, if it hit. So it was a seven leg parlay. I needed, first thing I needed, Joel first basket, all right? He didn't have the first basket, so I was out right away. Bobby Portis made, made, made a three of his first basket. Joel oh, first basket of the game. Of the game. It was, um, Joel took a three. It was a shot he took that would have been first basket. He missed it. It was the only three he went on to miss the entire night. He was three for four. That's hard. The rest of the legs, Tobias Harris, 15 or more points, that hit. Tyrese Maxey, 15 or more points, that hit. Joel Embiid, over 31 and a half points, that hit. Giannis Antetokounmpo, over 30 and a half points, that hit. Sixers to win by between one and 10, that hit. Joel Embiid, over eight and a half rebounds, that hit. I would have won $1,400. Wow. The only three he missed was the one I needed. Unbelievable. Him. It's like I he has it out for you or something. Wow. He, I love him. Listen, <laughs> it, was the, it was so sad because it was like, you know, I knew I was out from the beginning, which was fine. I didn't expect this bet to hit. But as I watched the rest of the game unfold and everything else hit, yeah, and he didn't. No, miss that's another, even worse. It's way. And worse. he didn't miss another three. Yeah. That was the only. You wish they would all not. Hit. And I, I was like, yeah. I'm hoping like the Giannis under hits or something, so I don't feel you know as bad about it. No. But imagine if it was like Joel for the last basket and all of them hit, and you had to sit and watch through the end of the yeah. game and like pray that he hits the last basket. That would have been worse. They don't offer last basket. But I know, they could, actually. but that, that would be, be really cool. cool. That would be cool. That's a great idea. I don't know why they don't do that. Should I get into this? This seems like either yes. a way that I would I would turn my financial luck aware around, or I would have somehow even less money. Well, you're not gonna. You're probably not gonna win much money. But you go in. And it sounds like I shouldn't get it. I've won money, but I don't bet that much, and I do a lot of the free stuff. So I do stuff yeah. like this. I'm feeling good about to, my Joel MVP bet. Stuff. That oh I yeah. Is there a way to only do the free stuff? Yeah, you can only do the free stuff. You just have to only bet every few days when they offer a free stuff. But, but the they make you, you put money that, in, right? Well, yeah, but you, yeah, you can't use your um, like you like if you do it. Say you bet like for this, you bet ten dollars, right? And then if it doesn't hit, you get your ten dollars back. But it's in site credit, and you can't use site credit on the next free bet. So you have to put more money. But the thing is, once you accumulate a bunch of site credit, you could bet on like Gonzaga to beat some team you've never heard of because they play a bunch of teams you've never heard of. And like, you always have that bet where it's like, okay, now I can withdraw this money. Like, or now I can mm -hmm. bet this money on the free stuff. Anyway, I think I'll probably be doing it. <laughs> um, this weekend is a uh, all-star weekend. Of course, Tyrese Maxey is there in the rising stars thing. Uh, he was in some wacky challenge where he missed a ton of layups. That was fun. Um, and he was, they, the Sixers did some avant-garde tracking shot like in goodfellas where they were behind him and he's high-fiving everyone he was dapping up joel and sitting next to him 
amazing, love it. Um, and Joel unveiled Arthur to the world and it was just tremendous. Oh, they were I nuzzling cannot. each other. He was introducing uh, Arthur, his son to- um, He's adorable. He's so uh, Carl cute. Anthony Towns uh, and uh, uh, Andrew Wiggins, among others, and uh, just just really wholesome, wonderful uh, All Star Weekend stuff. Dan, any specific takeaways on on stuff we've seen so far All Star Weekend? Just that, like, I love Arthur and Bede. Like, oh yeah. my god, he's, he's unbelievably beautiful. He's he looks so like cool. Anne. I love. Yeah, I love seeing you know Joel with him, especially because like. I mean, obviously, like, it's cute. Joel cares a lot about him, and we care a lot about, well, obviously, Joel cares a lot about him, and we care a lot about Joel, um, probably probably a lot less or so than he cares about his son, but still a lot. Um, and so, you know, to see, you know, to finally see the face, you know, Joel's talked about Arthur so much and how much, you know, it's meant to him to become a father. Um, and get to, getting to see him with his son and getting to see his son um, after everything we've heard, after how important it's been to Joel uh, was just awesome like it was it was great um and it's uh like can Joel get more like more likable it's, it's crazy it's unbelievable he is. yeah Emily um yeah in terms of Maxie Maxie was hilarious and adorable um in that track in that tracking shot when he sits next to Joel and he's like hey did you see me I had zero points <laughs> Like he thought that was like the best thing. And then he like had a Joel was like, like, you did? Yeah, like what? And then the Sixers posted another thing interview and they were like, Did you ever see yourself being like a rising star? And Maxie was like, growing up, I thought I'd be here, but I didn't think I would score zero points. Like he's like pointing it out in every interview that he had zero so points. Funny. Cause he I think he thinks it's funny. As do I. Um, but he just looks like he's having the time of his life. In this weekend I think all-star weekend is like supposed to be fun for the guys too and I'm glad that they're having fun um in terms of Joel yeah he's been he's talked about Arthur but he's been very private with Arthur like they haven't shown his face Joel doesn't really posted we've like caught glimpses of him if you like follow Joel's fiance or girlfriend but Joel doesn't post about him a ton on social um like pictures so for him to like have him at all-star weekend I think was really special it also goes back to um I don't in an interview him saying like he wants to be like the best in the world for his son and he wants Arthur to see him being the best of the world and I just in the world and I think it's really poetic that he brought him around this season when he is playing out of his mind like the lead in the lead for MVP like clearly the best in the world um to kind of like have him there for it, I think is probably really special for Joel. Um, like not even at first when they posted the video, I think Keith was the first one to post it. And I was like, oh shit, like is Joel going to get pissed? Like they don't post pictures of Arthur. Like was this supposed to be like a private thing? But then he like took him out to the media and people were posting it all over. So I guess it was like all good and clear. He was like, he's not used to this. He's just like the cutest little thing. Um, and I'm just happy for Joel that he's like really, found himself like in this father role it, it really suits him and I'm just so happy for him finally uh standings update Emily I believe that we all went one and one because the Sixers did and we we chose uh two uh, wins um where does that leave our uh our standings for the season here yeah so at the all-star break um me and steve are tied at 35 and 24 and dan is three games back at 32 and 27. all right well uh these figure to be james harden's first two games as a sixer i can't imagine if we have a loss getting predicted this weekend but we'll see um sixers play as i was uh, informed uh sixers play at uh, I thought that they had a full week off, and I was like, "What the? F are we doing a podcast?" They do yeah. have a full week off. It just doesn't align with when our podcast we got are. it. Got it. I was uh -huh. informed. Um, they play at Minnesota on Friday, which uh, Woj sort of reported that that this figures to be uh, as long as everything is is uh, going the right direction, figures to be James Harden's Philadelphia debut at Minnesota, and then Sunday a matinee at New York, the Knicks. Um, I am choosing two James Harden wins. Uh, Minnesota is good, and they're a pain in the ass to play, as the Sixers saw. 
uh, a couple months ago around, uh, I guess it was around Thanksgiving. Um, but I, I think that there's going to be plenty excitement and uh, the Sixers are just going to be really good. So uh, with that, I go to Emily. Yeah, I was actually tempted to say that they would lose to the Timberwolves. Like maybe there's just, you know, it's the first game. Like how will James Harden fit sure. in? Like they're practicing, but like it's not the same. But I just can't do it because I'm a shameless homer and I can't help myself. Therefore, I'm picking two wins. I think this is like 25 straight wins that we have predicted. It's, it's gross. No, I, I predicted oh, they ahead. would lose to Chicago and I was okay. wrong. But after that, it's the only one since a while ago. <laughs> Dan? I think these are both losable games because you have the excitement around Harden's first game that you're kind of like setting yourself up for a bit of a letdown. And then they suck at, on afternoon games. Uh, True. So that Knicks game. And the Knicks, as bad as they are, are still kind of a pain. So that game is losable. Um, that said, for basically the same reason Emily did, I, I'm not going to pick them to lose this week. Um, yeah. I, my, I, my predictions are 2-0 and and people are uh, very surprised that uh, how good James Harden is because I think that the vibe I got, the vibe I got when you know James Harden was initially you know looking to be traded was that I think people thought that Ben Simmons can do a lot of the guard things besides shooting that James Harden does, like the non-shooting things. Ben Simmons offers that, and I think people are going to be very pleasantly surprised at how how much better of a passer James Harden is how equally capable of a rebounder despite being so much smaller James Harden is how great of a ball handler James Harden is um, and of course gets to the foul line makes shots um, I, I cannot cannot wait to see him in a Sixers uniform um, I'm excited if Doc doesn't mess this up to no longer have to dread the minutes and beads on the bench. Um, I am just so excited for, for this, for this upcoming weekend. Um, not just because it's a weekend and today's Sunday and i just want to get through the week, but also because uh, Friday night is going to be a ton of fun and I'm super, super excited. That's it. As we uh, mentioned, subscribe to the YouTube, follow Gastro Blues Pod, Third and Girl, Steve J. Littman. DA Pelts, 13. Um, thank you, Drew, for everything. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for everything. Be safe and be great. Best of luck to James Harden. Best of luck to us. See you then.